It's no surprise that Game of Thrones has given us some monstrous characters. Cersei Lannister and her son Joffrey were certainly monstrous by nature, but Sir Gregor Clegane was monstrous by size, with the added psychopathic emotionless state of mind also. This made him one of, if not, the most feared man in Westeros, a man so large that he was called the Mountain That Rides, or most commonly and simply, the Mountain. In today's video, I'm going to take you through the entire life of Sir Gregor, from his early days of showing brutality so young, to his unspeakable horrific actions during Robert's Rebellion, and right up until his confrontation with Oberyn Martell. Welcome to Game of Throne lore. This is the life of the Mountain, Sir Gregor Clegane. Sir Gregor was born on a small patch of land southeast of Castle Rock in 266 AC. He had shown quite a violent streak from a young age and was much larger in size for his age than what many people would consider normal. He had a younger brother named Sandor who was also large in size but nowhere near Gregor's freakishly large form. Clegane's entire life is dark. His history is filled with blood and inflicted horror all the while having no regrets. His brutality notably began at the age of 12, when he scalded his younger brother Sandor by holding the younger boy's face to a hot brazier as punishment for playing with a toy he had discarded. Sandor was severely burned and left with horrific facial scars. The father spread the story that the injuries were caused by bedding that had caught fire, possibly not to draw the wrong kind of attention to his son. Just four years later, Gregor was knighted by Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, presumably prior to the tourney of Harren Hall. Gregor is a suspected kinslayer. There are several rumours that he killed his father, sister and his first two wives after they all displeased him at some point. However, none of these rumours have been confirmed. His keep, however, is said to be a dark, grim place where servants are said to vanish unaccountably. Gregor has committed rapes and cold-blooded murders beyond count over the years, but his most infamous deed came from his service to House Lannister during Robert's Rebellion. At the age of 17, Gregor was one of the first Lannister soldiers to enter King's Landing during its sack at the end of the war. He and Sir Amory Lork scaled Magor's holdfast when the Lannister troops reached the Red Keep. Gregor entered the nursery of infant Prince Aegon son of Prince Rhaegar, and killed the baby present by smashing the boy's head against the wall while Aemory killed Princess Rhaenys. Gregor then raped and murdered Aegon's mother, Princess Elia Martell, supposedly with the boy's blood and brains still on his hands. The identities of the two murderers have not been publicly confirmed in the recorded history, although Gregor's involvement is common knowledge at Castle Rock. Gregor's story now moves to the events of the first novel, A Game of Thrones, where he takes part in the Hand's Tourney, a tournament held to celebrate Ned Stark becoming the Hand of the King. He slays Sir Hugh of the Vale in his second joust, when his lance rides up and pierces the newly made knight's throat. According to Sandor, Gregor noticed the knight's gorget was not fastened properly and he purposely drove his lance there. He then defeats Sir Balin Swan but is finally unhorsed by Solaris Tyrell, who rides a mare in heat to the joust, which unnerves Gregor's stallion. The mountain falls into a rage and kills his stallion with one blow of his sword. He then attacks the unprepared Loris and would have surely killed him had it not been as Buddha Sandor's interference. He finally comes to his senses when King Robert Baratheon orders him to stand down. Stop this madness in the name of your... After the tourney, Gregor rides back to his keep. Upon his journey home from the tourney with seven of his men, Gregor broods on his loss. An overflowing river detours the group to a nearby ale house, where he and his men sexually assault the brewer's 13-year-old daughter, Lena. Upon reading this, I myself found it very difficult to comprehend such a horrific crime. Although the character is fictional, this violent tale truly cemented Sir Gregor 
as a man who knew no compassion. After Tyrion Lannister is kidnapped by Catelyn Stark, Gregor is commanded by Lord Tywin Lannister to raid the Riverlands to draw Eddard Stark, the Hand of the King, out into the field. Burn the villages, burn the farms. However, Eddard, due to his injured leg, cannot go and execute Gregor himself, instead sending Lord Beric Dondarrion and Thoros of Myr to lead a party and bring Gregor to the King's justice. However, Gregor and Tywin ambush this party, with Gregor killing Beric in the ensuing clash at the Mummer's Ford. The mountain also takes Stonehenge, putting the castle to torch, taking its food supplies, and burning the harvest of Lord Jonas Bracken. After the outbreak of the War of the Five Kings, Gregor joins with Tywin's host and commands the vanguard and the left flank during the battle on the Green Fork, leading by intimidation. In the first charge, his horse is killed by Karstark spearmen, but Gregor is unhurt and goes on fighting. After the victory, Tywin withdraws to Harrenhal, but leaves Gregor and the other raiders behind to harry the Riverlands, each of them commanding 300 cavalry. Gregor's story now moves to the Clash of Kings. His band goes on to sack Castle Darry, where Gregor mercilessly kills the eight-year-old Lord Lyman Darry. He continues his raiding, causing enormous destruction and killing entire villages with impunity. For a time, he unwittingly holds Arya Stark as a captive, and she witnesses many of his atrocities firsthand. His band marches any surviving captives back to Harrenhal, where they are forced into servitude to House Lannister. During the War of the Five Kings, Gregor's band fights numerous skirmishes with the Brotherhood without banners. During the Battle of the Fords, Clegane's band joins up with Tywin's hosts and attacks the crossing of the Red Fork at the Stone Mill, which is defended by Sir Edmure Tully's forces. Gregor's own forces are pushed back, however, and he is forced to retreat, much to his anger. In a storm of swords, Sir Gregor's band joins with Randall Tarley's army to surround what is left of the retreating northern army that attacks Dusk and Dale. He chases Lord Roos Bolton's army as they march to the Twins, taking several highborn captives, including Sir Willis Manderley, in the fighting at the Fords of the Trident. Lord Tywin Lannister then orders Gregor to retake Harrenhal, which is held by Vargo Hote and the Brave Companions, and put the castle to the sword. A cook of Harrenhal, who had his foot cut off by Hote, wanted revenge and opens a postern gate for Clegane to enter. Inside, Clegane's men slaughter the inhabitants and the defenders, bar the cook who opened the gate, the castle smith, and a girl named Pia. The mountain gives what he calls special treatment to Vargo Hote, who was known also as the goat, forcing him to eat his own cooked limbs, a play on roast goat, and serving him to the captive Northmen as well. When Prince Oberyn Martell comes to King's Landing to claim the seat on the small council on Prince Doran Martell's behalf and obtain justice for the murder of his sister Elia Martell and her children, as was agreed with the acting hand of the King Tyrion Lannister, the new hand Lord Tywin Lannister means to forgo that promise. Tywin plans on lying to Oberyn, claiming that the deceased Sir Amory Lork was to blame for all three deaths. While Amory was guilty of the murder of Princess Rhaenys, he was not responsible for the deaths of Elia and Prince Aegon. Tywin intends to keep Gregor far away from King's Landing during Oberyn's stay. He sends the Mountain and the others to search for his son Jaime when he learns of his release from Riverrun. But Jaime arrives at the capital under the guard of Brienne of Tarth. Tywin's plans to keep Gregor away is ruined when Tyrion is put on trial for the murder of King Joffrey Baratheon and Tyrion's accuser, Queen Regent Cersei Lannister, announces that her champion will be Gregor in the event of a trial by combat. Cersei names Gregor in order to thwart Tyrion from using Bronn or anyone else to defend him in a trial by combat, given Gregor's monstrous reputation and size. This move, however, leads Elia's brother Oberyn on seeing a chance to fulfill House Martell's long-held desire for vengeance against her murderer to agree to champion Tyrion in opposition. I will be your champion. Gregor fights in his usual style, with heavy armour, his thick oaken shield and his great sword in one hand, 
but Oberyn outfights him with speed, precise of strikes, and a poisoned spear. Though most of Oberyn's attacks are deflected by Gregor's plate, Oberyn cleverly attacks the joints in the armor, and eventually wounds Gregor after the mountain tires from chasing him. After being poisoned and crippled by numerous wounds, Gregor manages to grab hold of an overconfident Oberyn and crush him to death. Before killing Oberyn, however, Gregor roars that he killed Elia and Aegon for all to hear. I killed her children! Then I raped her! Then I smashed her head in like this! Despite Gregor's victory, Oberyn achieves his revenge for his murdered sister as he had coated his spear with a deadly poison which results in a long, agonizing death by mortification for Gregor. Tywin Lannister faces huge political ramifications for the results of the trial, especially Gregor's confession. He fears Dorne might join Stannis Baratheon, which could prolong the War of the Five Kings for years. Tywin planned on having Gregor executed to appease House Martell, but needed it to be seen that the King's Justice is the one who carries out the deed, not poison. He commands Grand Maester Pycelle to heal Gregor, but Pycelle's efforts prove ineffective. In A Feast for Crows, we learn that Gregor's condition continues to deteriorate. The venom turns the blood in Gregor's body black with gangrene, and any leeches that touch him die instantly. His urine is full of pus, and the venom eats a hole the size of a fist in Gregor's side. His screams of agony are so loud that they can be heard in the entire Red Keep, and wake several people up during the night. Kyburn states upon examining him that it is a wonder that the man is still alive. Kyburn brings the insensible and dying Gregor to the dungeons below the Red Keep, where the mountain screams can no longer be heard by those above the Black Cells. Kyburn experiments on Gregor before his impending death, and concludes that the poison was manticore venom, thickened with sorcery, to draw out the mountain's dying instead of killing him instantly. Gregor's skull is to be sent to Sunspear in Dorne as recompense for the deaths of Elia and her children. Kyburn says it took beetles many hours to clean flesh from the bone. He later mentions working on creating an unbeatable champion for Cersei, and uses several female prisoners in his experiments. He has her order a suit of plate armor so thick and heavy that the armor who created it states that no man is strong enough to even move or fight in it. In a dance with dragons, Sir Gregor is proclaimed as dead by the crown. His apparent skull is brought to Sunspear by Sir Balin Swan of the Kingsguard and is presented to Prince Dorid Martell, Princess Ariane Martell, and the eldest of Oberyn's eight bastard daughters, Obara, Tien, and Nymeria Sand. Obara ponders if the head is really Gregor's, however Doran notes that it is certainly large enough to be so, and Tien confirms that if the poison her father used so much as even broke the mountain's skin, then Gregor Clegane is surely dead. Meanwhile in King's Landing, the death of Sir Aerys Oakheart in Dorne leaves a vacancy on the King's Guard, Kyburn who unveils an enormous 8 foot tall knight encased from head to heel in gleaming white armour. Other members of the Kingsguard claim that their new brother does not eat, sleep, drink or even visit the privy. He is not seen without his armour and never removes his helmet. At no time has he spoken and it is claimed by Kyburn that he is taking a holy vow of silence until Cersei's innocence is proven and the realm purged of evil. He wears a helmet bearing seven plums in the colours of the fate, and his cloak of office is clasped with the icons in the shape of the seven pointed stars. Though he is introduced as Sir Robert Strong, many in the Red Keep have guessed the identity of the Silent Giant. Given the skull being sent to Dorne, it is unknown what will be revealed if that helmet is ever removed. The alias of Robert Strong is not used in the TV show, it's made apparent from the off that Gregor survived this encounter with Oberyn, but his state of mind seems to be non-existent, he has clearly been experimented and operated on, and given his rather grotesque appearance even with his helmet on, he only listens to Cersei. Sir Gregor Clegane is, in my opinion, the most frightening, terrorising man to be created by George or Martin. 
I always wonder what was going through his mind during the creation process, and more importantly why he created Gregor in the first place. Clegane is known for his violence and cruelty, he is a sadistic murder and rapist. Despite being a dim and brutal man, he has excellent warrior instincts. He is a solitary, never leaving his own lands except for wars or tourneys. A reason for his violent short tempered nature could be due to the fact that Sir Gregor constantly suffers from extremely painful headaches, so much that he consumes vast quantities of milk of the poppy to try and dull the pain, though it has little effect. The cause of these headaches are unknown, perhaps due to some condition of his giantism, or as a result from a blow to the head in battle. It will be interesting to see how he's used in future episodes of the TV show, and most importantly, the novel also. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.